Welcome. Welcome to Leveraging Digital Health Solutions for Clinical Engineering Practices. This webinar is organized by the IFMP Clinical Engineering Division. I am Rosana Rivas, IFMB Clinical Engineering Division elected board member and co-chair and founder of Health Level 7 Peru, affiliate of Health Level 7 International. It is my honor to moderate the July CD IFMB webinar. Digital health contributes to increase the quality of healthcare services, increases accessibility to healthcare system, encourages collaborations, improves the effectiveness of health information systems and more. Today's session will provide best practices, trends and evidences aimed all to encourage the development of digital health solutions from a global and a strategic perspective to enhance the clinical engineer's contribution in the healthcare system. And of course, to contribute to the quality assurance and excellence our patients deserve. Just a kind advice, the Q&A button is available uh, to set a question and it will be addressed just at the end of the three presentations. It means at the end of the presenters, we will start with the discussion and Q&A uh, process. Saying this, it is my pleasure to uh, present our first speaker, Ricardo Silva. Ricardo Silva is an electronic engineer with a master's degree in biomedical engineering, a doctorate in integrated biosciences with a mention in neurosciences, and a certified clinical engineer with more than 15 years of experience in carrying out technological projects for the health sector consultant on healthcare innovation, clinical engineering, and digital transformation. He is an accomplished professional with over 20 years of expertise at the forefront of digital health, health informatics, bioinformatics, and medical devices. His visionary understanding of the convergence of computer Neural sciences, biomedical engineering, and management practices is transforming the landscape of healthcare, education, and industry. It's my pleasure then to give the floor to Ricardo Silva. Go ahead, Ricardo. Thank you, Rosana. It's a pleasure for me to be here. I feel like your favorite influencer, Ricardo Silva, coming to you directly from the Big Apple, New York City. I'm here because I'm, I'm about to go to the Chinese consulate for an appointment. So I am going to have to make my presentation nice and quick. And just like I'm gonna be talking about distributed care and telehome care, I'm coming to you through the magic of video conferencing and remote education. So we are probing the limits of all of that technology. Can I see the next one, please? The next one, next slide. Can you hear me okay? Rosanna, perfect, thank you. So just like we're coming to you through video conferencing and remote communication, remote patient monitoring is nothing more than the communication of digital health technologies, signals through the use of the web and multiple web applications. So remote patient monitoring is the way of the future. And it's something that us as clinical engineers need to learn how to work with and manage. So let's go to the next one, please. So what, what is a remote patient monitoring? It's something that is provided to a connected medical device. Connected medical devices are nothing more than a computer could be your cell phone or something similar to your cell phone that is connected to a sort of actuators and or sensors that gather data from a patient. That data is then processed in your device and transmitted to a healthcare facility where someone is going to look at it. Uh, uh, are you, 
Is there a question at uh, Rosanna? Let's go to the next one then. So in the Internet of Medical Things, there are multiple pieces. You have a perception layer that is the layer closest to the patient gathering the information. Then you have all of the connectivity layer where the data is flowing to a processing layer where you actually extract information. So for example, if you have predict predictive algorithms, so you have a patient that has a remote monitor for cardiovascular disease and you're tracking for potential arrhythmias, so you actually have a processing layer that detects arrhythmias, and if an arrhythmia is detected, something happens. And that something happens in your application layer where data is going to be transmitted, for example, an emergency measure to your provider so that an action can be taken. Let's go to the next one, please. So, just like there is a path for the implementation through the medical side, we need to follow a similar path through the clinical and biomedical engineering side. So you cannot just go out and purchase the first device that you find in the market and expect that that device is going to function with the other devices and solve the problems that you want to solve. Truth is much more complicated than that. You actually need to understand what is the medical need that you're trying to solve, what are the requirements from the patient side, from the doctor side, from the connectivity side, and through all of those requirements, you start building an implementation pathway that at the end will provide you with the technology solution that will solve the patient and physician needs. So let's go to the next one. So what are the best practices? Well, the solutions need to be tailored for the user. It's not the same thing to gather a technology that is going to be used by a medical doctor who is a qualified professional or a technology that is going to be used by a regular individual, someone who may have only limited education, maybe has limited connectivity, so what is the element of connectivity at the patient side? What are the technologies available to this patient? And how good is the patient managing this technology? That is fundamental because if you do not search for the technology that would be suited for the potential user, then your solution is not going to solve the problem. At the other side, your solution also needs to be tailored for the provider who's going to be receiving the data, interpreting the results, and acting upon those results. So it is a two-pronged approach. At one side, you have the patient and its needs, and at the other one, you have the provider and the provider network and what other software you're going to connect to, for example, like your electronic medical records. Let's go to the next one, please. So what are the clinical engineering and information technology requirements that you need to meet? You need to integrate with the technology landscape that you have. You need to be able to meet the cost requirements. You need to ensure that all of the elements are compatible with what you are promoting. You need to meet all of the safety requirements, data, patient safety, security, law, ethics, like HIPAA in the United States and GDPR in Europe and many other parts of the world. And you need to know that what you're doing is handling medical information. So this is legal information you're transacting and there's liability associated with all of this. Let's go to the next one, please. So what networking technologies are there to send data? Many, you can use Wi-Fi, Zigbee, you can use Bluetooth, you can use near field communication, local area network, your LTD, 4G, 5G communication network. All of those are 
potential technologies that you could do, but the potential needs to be realized and you need to be able to ensure what is at the patient side so that you can connect through the correct network to upload the data into the internet and from there to your physicians, providers, clinical networks. Let's go to the next one, please. One thing that is super important, at the hospital, you are in direct contact with the medical devices. If anything happens to a medical device, the clinical engineer or the medical technician would be able to go and take care and solve the issue at the spot. When the device is at the patient's house, this is much more complicated. So you need to ensure that you're using devices that are robust, that are properly calibrated and that support calibration for a long time. But much more important, you need to ensure the cybersecurity of the connection because anyone could potentially tamper with the medical device affecting the result or the same patient could inadvertently manipulate the configuration of the device, shifting and changing the parameters and therefore producing misdiagnosis or miscommunication. So part of the activities now for the clinical engineers are not just selecting the technology, but actually educating the patient on how to properly use the technology and even how to troubleshoot at a basic level so that they can be part of the solution. Let's go to the next one, please. One fundamental aspect, again, I cannot emphasize this enough, is the data protection. According to HIPAA and GDPR, all medical information should be encrypted at rest and during transit. So you need to use secure encryption mechanisms and you need to handle multiple keys, hopefully multi-factor authentication so that you fulfill the requirements from the HIPAA and GDPR standpoint. However, that is complicated many times from the user standpoint. So let's go to the next one. There are solutions to manage authentication and to manage passwords. This is one company, I'm not affiliated with them, but they have a, a pretty nice solution identical. Their solution works kind of like a wallet. So in your cell phone, you have a digital wallet where you keep your credit card and credit card information in a secure way, where Identos and other companies like them provide digital wallets for health IT passwords and authentication. So you can keep all of your passwords and authentication secure within your digital wallet. And that way, when you enter and authenticate your connection to the medical device, you ensure that you are meeting all of the requirements from HIPAA and GDPR. Let's go to the next one, please. Now, what from the clinical engineer standpoint, how can I check if there have been unauthorized access or data breaches? Well, you can actually place snooping devices. And this is another company, Ybot, for example, they provide some very simple snooping devices that you can connect at the patient's home or at a remote clinical location. And this thing is just going to be tracking the regular traffic through the network. These systems have artificial intelligence and they can learn what is the regular traffic pattern at a household. And if something weird start, starts happening, then they can trigger an alert because maybe someone has accessed the system and there's been a data breach. So snooping software such as like this would be very helpful to detect actively any intrusion without providing additional burden to the clinical engineer. Let's go to the next one, please. Breaches are the number one problem faced by healthcare security and cybersecurity experts. And when we move healthcare to home care, these data breaches 
are going to become much more important, especially because patients are probably easier to tamper with and they can easily fall into a phishing attack or something like that. So again, very important is to educate and instruct the patients in how to behave within the system. So let's go to the next one. From the clinical engineering standpoint, again, there's a lot of tools that you would need to learn how to manage from the assets management to operating system patch management to data spill protection, vulnerabilities, authentication, uh, device, uh, how, how do you manage the device disposal and destroy critical data, procurement, et cetera. So it is the same thing that we've been doing as clinical engineers, but now expanded where the hospital is anywhere at any time. Let's go to the next one. And the next one is simple. Are we ready for this? Do we know how to manage robust security, regular risk assessment, promote awareness and training and adhere to the industrial best practices? Well, that is exactly what we need in order to be able to navigate and face the world of connected medical devices. And the next one and last, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please write them down on the chat so that they can be answered at the end. Goodbye. I'm... It was an amazing presentation, Ricardo. Indeed, we are sure that there will be insightful comment, comments and discussion at the end. And for now, I appreciate it very much your participation and we will call our next speaker. Uh, let's call Stephen Grimes. He is an authority speaker and author of on future challenges facing the technology support industry to healthcare technology convergence, medical device security, risk management, and quality management issues. Stephen, he is a fellow of Healthcare Information and Management System Society, the Association for the Advancement of Medical Instrumentation, and the American Institute of Medical and Biological Engineering, and the American College of clinical engineering, we, where he is also a past president. Some awards deserved by Steve are AMS Healthcare Technology Management Leadership Award in 2016 and the AMI Foundation Iconoclast Award in 2023 and ACC's Lifetime Achievement Award in 2015 and the ACCE HIMS Annual Excellence in Clinical Engineering and IT Synergies in 2010 Award. In 2019, Stephen Grimes was inducted into the ACC Clinical Engineering Hall of Fame. It's my pleasure now to introduce today to Stephen Grimes' presentation. Go ahead, Steve. Uh, thank you, Rosanna. Um, and we have a, um, I was having some technical difficulties, so we've made arrangements. Uh, I've recorded the presentation. It's uh, 11 minutes, and so we're going to bring that up now and play that for you. And then I'll be available to answer questions uh, at the sure. uh, end of the third presentation. Sure. Thanks. Uh, first, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Rosanna and the Clinical Engineering Division of IFMBE for the opportunity to speak with you today. In my presentation, I'm going to be talking about the evolving digital health and its implications for clinical engineering. I've broken my 10-minute presentation into three sections. First, I'll speak about the evolution of digital health and the impact on providing health care. Uh, next, I'll speak about the implications of the evolution of digital health it has the role of clinical engineering and what we m must do to remain relevant. Finally, I'll take a couple of slides to summarize key points of this presentation. 
First, looking at digital health, we see that over the past 30 years, the evolution of increasingly computerized and connected systems has led to an evolution of hybrid systems. That is, systems not only of medical technology, but also incorporating elements of information and telecommunication technologies. Because the overlap in traditional clinical engineering and information technology support services is often not seamless, this poses a particular challenge because it's often not clear whether a particular problem or an issue is related to medical technology elements of a system or perhaps related instead to IT or telecommunications technology. It's also a new challenge for clinicians who are having technical issues because it's not often clear whether they should contact clinical engineering or IT for assistance. And frankly, it's not a choice we should be asking clinicians and practitioners to make. Uh, this graphic is illustrated or is designed to illustrate how technology has driven the practice of medicine for most of human history. Healthcare was based on an approach illustrated here in uh, level zero, where uh, a diagnosis was based on a medical practitioner's observation combined with the practitioner's accumulated knowledge. And treatment was based on that practitioner's knowledge and the ability to, to apply simple tools in medicines. In level one, we see in more recent uh, or in human history over the past hundred years, healthcare practitioners have had access to have had access to specialized tools to help in diagnosis and treatment. Healthcare was slightly better, but was still generally limited to a practitioner's knowledge. In more recent times, in recent decades, healthcare and improved diagnostic and therapeutic tools have also begun to have access to decision support and expert systems to augment practitioners' own knowledge. And then finally, in level three, uh, into the future, a better design and support in expert systems, uh, along with better diagnostic and therapeutic technologies, will greatly amplify the practitioner's uh, capability, making many of the care decisions more automatically and consequently free from human error. Over the past 30 years, healthcare technology has grown considerably more complex and software-based. As we move into the near future, medical technology continues to evolve. Most medical device manufacturers today will admit they're becoming primarily software developers. Whenever possible, more medical data processing and storage will be moving from local devices and networks up into the cloud. The reason for this migration is the potential for greater efficiency, increased availability to users regardless of the location, and better management, better security, and better backup. After moving data processing and storage to the cloud, the remaining hardware for many medical devices will be like the some clients in IT. It will largely be digital sensors and therapeutic actuators. This timeline illustrates the evolution of health technology, where health technologies increasingly computerized, full-feature systems, connected systems, including diagnostic systems connected to therapeutic systems, and complex and smart systems taking advantage of cloud services to provide greater access. Some of the benefits of this evolution are the ability to centrally manage connected systems, faster and more reliable care due to access to intelligent systems with more data, and also a benefit of intelligent technical systems that have the ability to self-configure, self-diagnose, and self-repair. Some of the challenges that we see are the increased complexity of these systems requiring different types of support in order to maintain their effectiveness, the and also uh, the potential for uh, increasing the number of vulnerabilities and single points of failure. Over the past 30 years, we've begun to see a move to more diverse healthcare delivery modes and venues. We're moving into uh, more rapidly into telehealth, most recently driven by the COVID pandemic, also developing and deploying new technologies that will enable us to deliver care at the home, uh, in the home, at work, at school, and on the go. Examples of some of the evolving technologies driving the future of digital health include robotics, 3D imaging and printing, telemedicine, remote monitoring, micro and nanotechnologies, individualized medicine, including genomics, connected systems of systems and cloud-based systems, including uh, uh, the, the uh, 5G and the Internet of Medical Devices, clinical decision support and expert systems, artificial intelligence, 
and machine learning and augmented reality. Connected technologies and nanotechnologies will enable us to diagnose and treat areas we previously could not access because of distance or other physical uh, limitations. Things like 3D uh, printing and genomics will enable us to diagnose and customize much more effective treatments. In the next few slides, we'll review uh, some of the significant implications the evolution of digital health has on clinical engineering. This graphic is meant to summarize the previous points made with new technology. There's a need for new services and tools, and that need in turn requires new support roles to develop new knowledge, skills, and abilities on the part of the professionals. Let me begin by stating what I believe is probably obvious to most of us is healthcare technology management services and clinical engineering roles must be a function of the technology they support. That means as new medical technology evolves, the nature of clinical engineering support services, including uh, support professional roles, must also evolve to remain relevant. From a technology standpoint, the principal drivers in the past and near future include increasing convergence uh, technologies, particularly those related to medical information and telecommunications. They include an increasingly uh, or an increasing technology complexity. Today, we have not just technical systems, but also the evolution of systems of systems. And medical technologies, uh, like so many technologies we deal with today, have become smarter and more software-based. And uh, we're also seeing that the modes and venues of healthcare delivery are changing. We'll continue to see more telehealth and home care. So what does all this mean for those who support these technologies, that is clinical engineering professionals? It means their roles must evolve and change corresponding to the evolution of technology. In this scenario pictured here, an engineering technician is servicing a medical device. Traditionally, field engineering technicians have remotely accessed service experts like uh, the manufacturer over the phone to obtain service assistance. Increasingly, organizations using teleservicing uh, via the internet to conduct remote diagnostics, configuration, and troubleshooting. This also includes software updates and patching, uh, patching uh, via remote access. We're beginning to see the use of advanced support between remote service uh, experts and the uh, field engineering technician using augmented reality, where the field engineering technician becomes the eyes and uh, hands of the remote service expert. Another trend accelerated COVID uh, pandemic is how clinical engineering professionals obtain their education and training. Colleges and universities, uh, university education, operations and technical training, conferences and professional development. These are all transforming uh, online and becoming available on demand at, uh, from any location at any time. And finally, I'll take a couple of slides to summarize key points I've tried to make. In the future, medical and information technology will continue to evolve in ways that blur our old concepts. Examples of this include the question of when a, is a computer or when is software a medical device. Medical equipment manufacturers are increasingly focusing on developing software and some uh, that will be hardware platform agnostic. The future of clinical data analysis and storage uh, is in the cloud and it will be managed by artificial intelligence. Rapid technology innovations uh, will place increasing burdens on regulators who are challenged to regulate effectively uh, without stifling innovation. They're also challenged, uh, challenging healthcare providers who may be financially constrained but who want the technology in order to effectively compete for new systems. And also existing in clinical engineering and IT infrastructures must uh, collaborate acquire new tools and learn to prioritize in order to address the greatest risk if they hope to support new technologies. This is a brief summary of the steps in uh, the clinical engineering community needs to consider in the course of their reset. Clinical engineering and information technology need to uh, change their current trajectories if they're going to be in a position to support new digital health technologies. They need to consider how to redefine roles that were originally defined decades ago, so those roles and relevant 
are relevant to today's and tomorrow's needs. They need to identify education skills that will be necessary to move uh, into those defined roles. They need to work with the industry to define new guides and standards that, that facilitate collaboration between support services and ensure future services meet those needs. And they need to uh, identify uh, and work with other stakeholders uh, and their organizations to further define effective roles and relationships. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you. Well, it has been indeed a really nice uh, presentation and a video, of course, uh, demonstrate what is uh, the kind of discussion we are going to have in, in some minutes ago. Thank you very much, uh, Steve, and, and we look forward to uh, make the discussion later and also to answer some questions from the attendees. Thank you. Let's go now to our next speaker. She is uh, Sandy Rihanna. Sandy uh, is a computer and biomedical engineer at the forefront of digital health innovation. With over 10 years of experience in the field, as the head of the biomedical engineering department and technology transfer office, director at Holy Spirit University, PhD in biomedical engineering. She was awarded the prestigious Guy Danilo Prize for her outstanding contributions. Sandy gained international recognition for her expertise. She has numerous publications and is a sought after speaker at national and international conferences, webinars, and symposiums, inspiring audiences with her captivating presentations on the transformative power of digital health. She actively serves as a consultant, mentor, and corporate trainer for startups and industries, further driving advancements in the digital health landscape. It's my pleasure now to uh, invite uh, to uh, the floor to Sandy Rihanna. Go ahead, Sandy. Thank you. Thank you, Rosan, for this invitation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm proud to, be, I'm, uh, to present you today, like embracing digital health for optimal patient outcome, a sustainable tomorrow. So let's imagine a world where healthcare costs continue to surge, placing immense financial strains on individuals, on family, and even on entire nations. Even the, uh, in the United States that have the highest health uh, expenditure, approximately it's 17.7% of the US GDP. But it's not just the developed world facing this challenge. In fact, rising costs in develop, uh, developing countries are burdening households, particularly in low and middle income nations. So due to population growth, urbanization, the surge in chronic disease, these all factors, they are contributing to the exponential rise of the financial burden of the healthcare. Moreover, we are confronting another critical aspect of the healthcare challenges which is the limited access to quality services in numerous regions, particularly in rural and underserved areas. The lack of accessibility causes delayed diagnosis, poor health outcomes, and troubling health disparities. In addition to that, the fragmented healthcare systems and disjoint communication among various providers and facilities aggravate all these issues, leading to further delay, increased health disparities, and many others. Therefore, there is an urgent need for digital and sustainable solution in the healthcare system. Embracing digital health is the key to unlock the future of enhanced efficiency and effectiveness of the healthcare the technology. 
either with electronic health records, telemedicine solution, artificial intelligence driven diagnosis, all these solutions that can help to reduce administrative burdens and elevate the overall healthcare efficiency. But that's not all, because also digital health opened the doors to improve access to our healthcare. Through telemedicine and remote monitoring technology, we can bridge the gap, reaching patients and remote or underserved areas, ensuring better access to medical expertise and timely intervention. Furthermore, digital health empowers patients, putting their health back in their hands. With different health applications, wearable remote monitoring devices, individual can actively monitor chronic disease, diabetes, and many others, and foster increased patient engagement in their care. So digital technology play a pivotal role by coupling the patient data and leading to personalized and precision medicine, resulting for better healthcare outcomes. Moreover, adopting digital health solutions and healthcare facilities will lead to greener or more sustainable health, other than reducing paper, energy consumption, and access. Digital health analytics and big data will help in order to have better insight into population health trends. So all of these, there is a crucial need in order to invest in research and innovation that becomes a driving force in, in order to shape the future of healthcare. So in a nutshell, the world of digital health has limitless possibilities. So as we have mentioned, electronic health record for efficient data management, telemedicine and telehealth for remote access care, mobile health for health monitoring on the go, wearable devices and IoT where artificial intelligence can revolutionize and uh, help diagnosis and deliver personalized treatment. Uh, health data analytics in order to uh, provide population health insight, virtual and augmented reality to enhance medical education, pain management, uh, as already mentioned, also troubleshooting and education of medical professionals and medical uh, technologists. So all of this, embracing digital health will open door to all of these type of innovation. Here I would like to just introduce a few of the examples that we have led as case study of digital technology and artificial and healthcare, uh, mainly in the field of digital health and so. So first, first project is like a collaboration with a called Polytechnique Montreal, where we have developed an artificial intelligence framework in order to predict epilepsy. The second project, it mainly was a startup in cardiology and mainly to classify activity status and emotions through the heart variability analysis. So this cardiology project has been designed in order and as published. Moreover, here we would like to introduce a groundbreaking solution for parents and busy moms who seek continuous and affordable remote monitoring for their baby's health and well-being. So in this case, in this case, with this telemedicine product, uh, telemedicine also become uh, uh, an option. And uh, mainly here, the magic lies, as mentioned, we are considering security authentication, multi-factor authorization, it's HIPAA compliant, including like uh, multiple vital sign monitoring and artificial intelligence in order to help in the diagnosis. Another type of innovative project, uh, also here, the ultimate hikers companion. So here it's like smart backpack that monitor vital sign, track the hikers and remove. And like uh, whenever uh, an airbag that is ready to deploy at any unexpected fall. And that's not all, it automatically alerts emergency contact with the precise location. Uh, so, 
whenever calling all the COVID-19 orders, so have you or any our loved ones battled against COVID-19? And uh, so basically we were all like uh, looking for a solution in order to help in the COVID-19 area. So here, uh, again, changing a remote monitoring platform in order to provide continuous monitoring for uh, isolated patient fighting the virus to stay with them. Our solution were not only limited to patients, but also we have crafted for a solution for dedicated healthcare professionals. So here, a medical triage in mind in order uh, to help the medical hosp hospital administration. So a system to prioritize ICU care for high-risk patients. Another example, so you may know perfectly that the COVID-19 area has sparked pharmaceutical resolution and turned towards the digital health and the silico modeling. So witnessing how artificial intelligence and in silico modeling have turbocharged the drug delivery process. Uh, so here, one uh, our past project have, uh, we have many past projects in this domain either in the pre-term delivery to political treatment or in neurology for broad brain barrier drug development. And many other projects in the digital field related augmented reality and virtual reality for medical education and uh, many other. So finally, just if you want to embrace healthcare, uh, digital health, uh, all the stakeholders should be involved, either the provider and the institution in order to embrace digital health, to invest in training and education of the healthcare professionals, to enhance interoperability, ensure to respect, ensure data security, privacy, and all the different standards and the norm for um, the, in the medical devices, software as a medical devices on healthcare technology. As for the policymaker, also uh, creating a supportive policy environment, ensuring data privacy and security standard, addressing equity and access for the vulnerable and undeserved population, fostering innovation and research, and um, prioritizing efficiency and safety in any uh, type of product or service uh, design for us. So finally, and also the patient, which is the main all innovation in the healthcare technology centered around the patient and the whole wider community, the patient are invited to embrace digital health, to seek telemedicine and remote monitoring, to support research and engaging in health data management and advocating for digital health policies. So uh, that's it. Uh, this is how we can embrace digital health resolution, uh, revolution, and let's take this opportunity for a healthier and brighter tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Sandy. It is uh, really a pleasure uh, to have you attended your presentation now. We are uh, in the moment of the uh, discussion. I would uh, like to uh, request kindly to Stephen Grimes and to Sandy Rihanna to set on your videos. Uh, please, uh, uh, Sandy, uh, close your presentation in order just to focus on the videos uh, of your face and the face of Stephen to start the discussion. Thank you. Well, we're going to start now uh, with uh, Stephen. Uh, you uh, mentioned really amazing contents, uh, insightful contents indeed. I would like kindly to uh, share with us uh, some in some other um, approaches to the clinical engineering and IT services as they are, as you said, needed to be aligned to support the converging and evolving technologies. Uh, please um, comment about this, uh, Stephen. Uh, sure, I'll comment. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are really two critical aspects of uh, the uh, ensuring that we're prepared to support new technologies, technologies that are quite different from the ones we've traditionally supported, 
And as a consequence of there being different, we really need different support models to, uh, to uh, address them. Part of the support model, one of the differences as far as the support model is concerned, is that we need a much more effective collaboration between clinical engineering and those that have been involved in doing traditional IT support. Uh, so in order to have effective collaboration, we need to engage IT, the people in IT and telecommunications, and um, basically go uh, uh, engage them in a uh, discussion and a plan for here are the new technologies we're dealing with, often hybrid technologies. Um, how do we, how are we going to effectively support these? <clears throat> So one of the things that often that uh, you know we've suggested is uh, uh, that uh, organizations consider uh, that uh, instead of uh, a nurse or a, a physician calling clinical engineering or calling IT, they basically should call a uh, a central help desk that handles requests uh, for any technical uh, support, and that there be a system within that help desk to determine who best can uh, uh, support the problem. But there needs to be, again, um, kind of a, a meeting of the minds between clinical engineering and IT uh, and uh, you know, more effective collaboration because it's only possible uh, through effective collaboration that we're going to be able to uh, uh, you know, support these systems. Um, so uh, again, it's, uh, understanding uh, uh, IT needs to understand more about clinical engineering and clinical engineering needs to understand about more about IT. And they need to basically come together on those key aspects, those things that are going to be supporting um, the, uh, the new technologies. Totally, yes. Uh, it's a, a kind of uh, unique networking and you need exchanging and knowledge of each other. To make exactly. the thing the best for the patient, the best for healthcare system. Very nice. Don't uh, don't uh, forget that we are going to 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 talk again in a while. Sandy, it is now your turn. Uh, I would like much you to contribute in these uh, amazing aspects uh, of recommendations for healthcare uh, stakeholders. You mentioned uh, two of them. Uh, one of them is enhanced interoperability in the case of institutions and providers. And the other recommendation is this ensure data uh, by us, um, but uh, the data privacy and the security standards to be applied in the case of policies. Please, um, your approach in this regard. Yes, sure. So basically, as already mentioned by uh, Steve and by Ricardo, and we know perfectly that data breaches are mainly and many cybersecurity and so the security and the data privacy are mainly very crucial and very well needed in any design of medical devices of, or software as a medical device. So, uh, and we know that all the regulation, the, the CE or the FDA have these specific uh, guidelines that we should follow and in order and the tasks that should be done in order to prove and to provide this before, uh, because it's very crucial. So, and also the same for the interoperability in order to make either the device or the software uh, like can communicate all together. So what we have, if we create a medical device or a software that cannot communicate with other devices or software, and we cannot exchange like uh, 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 medical data standards. So in this case, uh, this is why also, also either the interoperability or the security are mainly uh, like criteria very crucially also uh, requested by the regulation uh, in order to regulate any medical device or software as a medical device. Thank you. Yes, uh, also from by the side of the policy and regulation and also the investment, uh, private and public, to make this as a standard, uh, the standard, the approach in us to make the best 
giving the healthcare services and making them sustainable. Because exactly. the patient, yes, as we said with Stephen right now, uh, the patient is the first. If the patient is the first, how can we be able everywhere to accept isolated centers of information without connection, without the standards of privacy uh, in the information of the patient, etc. Thank you very much, Sandy. And we go back now to uh, Stephen, but also to Sandy to request two final comments. We have been in this amazing session uh, with Ricardo, who unfortunately um, he is dealing with the process now, but uh, with the uh, content provided by Ricardo Silva, Stephen Grimes, and Sandy Rihanna. And now my final question for you is what are a kind of, what is kind of uh, your final uh, insightful, strong, last idea, last reflection for this session? Um, in your case, Sandy, uh, you will start and then Stephen with his contribution. My uh, last word is like, let's embrace the digital health and let's work all together as patient-centered, efficiency-centered, health safety, in order to uh, create innovative solution uh, that patient that has a patient outcome and then maintain the healthcare system sustainability to save more life and to reduce cost uh, that, is, uh, that is very heavy either for patients or families or at national. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy. Stephen? Um, Stephen, your microphone is uh, is muted. Sorry about that. All right. Okay. Sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, I agree with Sandy. I think uh, along the lines of what she's talking about, the promise of digital health has the potential to provide uh, much better quality uh, healthcare to a wider portion of the, the of the world's population. So I think that, you know this is critical quality healthcare to the, a wider portion of the world's population. However, as with any technology, there are potential downsides if we don't ad uh, adapt ourselves. Uh, we need to recognize again that uh, it's new technology. It has different requirements. A lot of many of the things that we've done uh, in clinical engineering and healthcare technology management over the years that may have been right for older technologies aren't going to be appropriate for the new ones. So what we need to look at is, with these new technologies, what is it that we can do to more effectively support them? Uh, an example of that is, frankly, a lot of the maintenance that uh, was involved in uh, the uh, early years in terms of the, the technology, the, uh, the testing and maintenance that had to be done um, is a requirement of new technology. So one of the things that uh, you know we find ourselves often doing is, trying to educate the existing clinical engineering community that look at there are you know do the maintenance if it's required but understand there are many things like uh, uh, addressing cybersecurity issues that you need to pay attention to uh, because again that's a uh, our a vulnerability or risk associated with the new technology that's one of them but there are others so look at the new technologies and determine what do I need to change? How, what type of support do I need to provide so that I can ensure these technologies will remain effective and they will be applied appropriately? Again, it's one of the challenges, uh, great technology, but if it's not applied appropriately uh, and not effectively maintained, then we will lose the, the benefit, the potential benefit of those technologies. Thank you very much um, for this last insightful uh, contribution, Stephen. Indeed, we are talking about a sustained process, a complex process for all, the approach of system of systems that we you have already mentioned in your presentation, and the um, certitude that no one of us has all the information, all the resources, all the knowledge, no one of us uh, has this power. We need 
the networking, we need this type of uh, events and this type of valuable contribution as yours and Sandy, Rihanna and Ricardo Silva. Uh, is, I appreciate the insightful presentations of our distinguished speakers today, Ricardo Silva, Stephen Grimes and Sandy Rihanna. You each contributed to make a remarkable conference today. On behalf of the IFMB Clinical Engineering Division, it's my pleasure uh, and to thank you all for your attendance and look forward to keeping communication and invite you all to the August webinar, which will be, of course, uh, focused again in digital health. Uh, these uh, next webinars, we have uh, this focus as a topic, as a main topic. For now, I say goodbye, good night, or have a good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye.